Hello friends. Uh, it's been a hot minute since I've sat down in front of the camera and poured out my heart and shared with you any bits of my life. If you follow me on Instagram, you know all about the things that are going on in my world and why I put a big giant pause on YouTube for a while. Um, if you follow my channel and you watched some of my last vlogs, you probably got a bit of an inkling about why I took a big, giant, several months long break. Um, and it was because I got my dream job of being a pastor, full-time pastor at our church. Um, I am the kids pastor. And if you follow my vlogs, you knew that last summer I was asked to come on as the children's ministry assistant to our children's pastor. Um, she runs this huge day camp. It is huge. It's like six weeks. It's a ginormous commitment. Um, she had a lot of personal things that were happening in her world. Some good things, some not great things, but she needed me to come on on Sunday mornings to facilitate kids church for her. And uh, it was such an honor and it was so so awesome um, and throughout the summer our church grew by leaps and bounds um, we had uh, we grew I don't want to throw out numbers but we grew we like quadrupled in size really um, and it was a lot it was in all of the best ways but it was just a lot and it was so consuming. I was only hired to do like 10 to 15 hours a week, but I was putting in a lot more because of this explosive growth um, and uh, just facilitating all that. Like not even just the spiritual aspect of that growth, but the physical aspect of it as well. Just managing people and putting new systems into place and teaching every Sunday and uh, it was it was powerful and amazing and super awesome and at the end of the summer um, our senior pastor her lead pastor asked me to come on full time the children's pastor is still on staff not as the children's pastor she's the pastor of young families she'd been looking to transition for about three years actually and um, she'd put in like that she was done with kids ministry and they were actively looking for a children's pastor and they interviewed people they'd been really close to hiring and things just always fell apart um and it's amazing to me to look at like what I was going through in those three years and how God was preparing me for this role. He knew that if this was a job that was meant for me. I wouldn't have been ready three years ago, um, but when I was in high school, I felt a calling to go into ministry and it was strong, y'all. It was intense and strong. There were two things that I always wanted to do with my life. The first was to be a farmer and God willing, that will be a, a, a dream achieved someday. Um, and the second was to be a pastor. That's what I was going to go to college for and a story for another day, but God closed a lot of doors and he opened a lot of doors and he closed the doors on traditional Christian college. He also closed the door on traditional school because when that door closed on Christian college, um, I was, I had no idea what to do with my life. And I thought, well, I'll just be a social worker. Um, and, uh, God closed that door and he opened up another one where I went uh, to this ministry training program that radically changed my life called Master's Commission. Um, and I've, I've never lost sight of that goal of where I felt God calling me into full-time ministry. But over the years, I couldn't see why doors were closing and others were opening and he just never put me in that path of full-time ministry. And, um, at the time, I couldn't understand why God was taking me the long way around. But as I stood on stage, as we announced that I was taking the children's pastor role, I could see why God took me the long way around. He needed me to for the position that I'm in now. Um, it's, it's just incredible. God's so cool like that. Um, 
So I took the position. My first official start date was September 4th. Uh, that was that week the kids started back at school. Typically with our homeschooling, we would start in August because I wanted my kids to have a longer summer. Here in Ontario, at least where I am, school goes out till the very end of June, like the last Friday in June. So um, it's ridiculous and long and it just feels like, ugh, like let's get out of this thing. So we would always start in August so that we could finish up in May and have a longer summer. Um, but this past year, I was too busy with the church. I couldn't do that. So um, I said, you know what? We'll just start when the reg when regular public school opens up because they were going back to school sometime early September. Whatever day we started was the day that public school opened up. And I, y'all know, like if you were following me, you saw that I had set up my whole year. I had all of my, um, my folders in place with all of our schoolwork. Like I would mapped out the year. I had printed the stuff. Like all I had to do was take a folder of work and boom, there it was. Like I was set up more organized than I'd ever been for homeschool. And we tried it for two weeks. <laughs> Just couldn't do it. Um, the beauty of my position was I, w I could work from home. Um, and I was told I could work from home, but because there was so much hands-on work that needed done at the church. And because I struggled to separate my work life from my home life, um, I couldn't do both well. And we made the tough decision, uh, after praying about it, um, to put the kids in public school. And it was uh, tough for a hot minute there. Colt had never been away from me. Um, and he had a lot of reservation about going to school. Aubrey was hesitant at first and then was like, Mom, I'm praying that you guys put me back in school. Because um, she had started first junior kindergarten, senior kindergarten, and first grade had all been in public school. We loved their school. Like it was, it's just this, this small, like neighborhood school that is just phenomenal. Loved it. I've never had anything to do with their school. The reason why we homeschool. Um, so we talked about it and it just seemed right. Um, when I called to register the kids, uh, the secretary knew exactly who I was right away. She hadn't spoken to me in three years and she knew exactly who I was. She knew exactly who Aubrey was. Um, we got them registered like the following week and they started and um, it was awesome. It was really honestly like the best choice. We started out where I was like, oh, I'll drive you to school. And then they were begging to take the bus. And so they would take the bus, we'd sign them up for the bus, and it was just good. It was just really good. Um, and so that's what happened. And then, uh, of course, <laughs> coronavirus hit, and um, they're still doing school. It's all online school. Um, and it's weird because I'm in this funky place of I really want to homeschool my kids. But because they're required to do academic work through the school and they're required to do certain things, it's been really difficult to try and mix in homeschool with that. So it's been a weird spot. We're just really all ready to be done uh, <laughs> with, the, with the learning. Um, but anyways, all that aside, why was I not filming? And it was simply because I was going um, at a pace that I wasn't used to. You have to understand that I have been now married for 12 going on 13 years. Yeah, I've been married. This year will be our 13th wedding anniversary. <laughs> um, and uh, I've since I got married, I, I was a stay-at-home wife first because I couldn't work in Ontario. I'm American living in Canada and I couldn't work here. So I was a stay-at-home wife for like three years before we had Aubrey and it did not make sense to have a baby and then go to work when I've been a stay-at-home wife. So um, I've always stayed home with my family. I've always been, I've classified myself as a homemaker. Um, that has just been my world, my home, 
is my world. And I always had time to myself to manage my time and make it what I wanted it to be. Now I'm a full-time working mom, outside the home mom, who works, you know, sometimes evenings, um, weekends, like Sundays, if there's events, I'm there, um, that kind of thing. And it was such that I needed time to figure out my new life. <laughs> I needed time to adjust and the bare minimum had to be on my plate. Of course, it was my relationship with God, my relationship with Shane, my kids, and then my work at the church. And that's about all that I could fit on my plate. And I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't film. Um, it would be awesome to look back at, you know, those memories of transition, but there was no way that uh, after working a full day, spending time with my family, cleaning up our home, getting us ready for the following day, that I could first of all film, let alone edit. Filming is no big deal. It's always the editing that's like the hard part. Um, so that's what happened. Uh, I, I just, I couldn't. Um, and it was also kind of interesting during that time, I actually stopped watching YouTube. Um, I just, I, I put a hold on everything. I stopped checking my comments. Um, I stopped watching YouTube. I created a new account for myself and I created it for the purpose of, um, being able to like download or watch videos for like kids ministry I guess I don't even know how to say that but um so that my feed was no longer like YouTube stuff no longer makeup and homemaking and clean with me's and junk like that it was not junk but you know what I mean it wasn't stuff like that and uh it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> what life looks like when um, you're not looking at a staged life or, um, you know, I don't even know. And I didn't miss it. <laughs> I really didn't miss it. Um, there was, apart from like my actual friends here on YouTube, I just didn't really watch anything. Um, I found a few small channels that I felt like I could connect with um, under that other name and I just stopped and I had to sit with that and evaluate what I wanted to bring to the table when I started filming again because it was never a question if I was coming back or not ever. That was never on the table for me. I always knew I was going to start filming again. It was just a matter of when and what would I be bringing to the table. And I realized um, I had I had to really sit with who I want to be on this platform. I've always been myself. Um, I have always like there is just no like polishing up my world. But I um, I could really just see a lot of polishing up that um, people do for views and I just, it just left such a foul taste in my mouth that I just didn't want to be a part of that. I had to sit and evaluate what I want to bring here. Time is your most valuable asset. You don't get more of it. You have a finite amount. You have a finite amount during your day. You have a finite amount of time for your life. And where you choose that to spend that time is precious. If you are going to take time to watch anything that I put out into the world, video, Instagram post, Insta story, whatever, I want it to be uplifting, encouraging, and valuable. I want to bring you joy. I want to bring you hope. I want to bring you encouragement. And um, I needed to make sure that that's what I could bring to you. And I had to sit with what um, that will look like. Um, 
I gotta tell you, I was really impacted uh, by the death of Andrea Mills. Um, if you don't know who she was, she was this incredible YouTube, not YouTube, she was this incredible woman who had a YouTube channel. She had like 50 some thousand followers and her channel wasn't monetized. She never filmed for money. She filmed for the pure love of the people who followed her. And she was the most genuine woman. Um, she had, she has lots of kids and um, lived a very simple life and just very, very encouraging. Um, and I loved Andrea. I loved her channel and her spirit and her, the way she moved in the world. And she died very suddenly last year. Um, she had cancer and it was the type of cancer that would take you within a week. And within a week of being diagnosed, she, was, she had passed away. Um, the beauty of part of her legacy is that she filmed everything. Her husband is now even going through old footage and putting out videos that she had created because she filmed their entire lives. And she did it with a way of, first of all, capturing their memories, um, but also in teaching others. And her channel is a living scrapbook of their lives. And it's just incredible. And I thought to myself, if I were to be taken from this world, what am I leaving behind? What is there for my children to watch? What am I teaching them? What will they see in my life? What is the fruit and um, what will I be leaving that they feel like that they wanna grab hold of for their own lives? And so that has played into what I'm uh, thought about my channel. And um, I realized that a lot of my content will just stay the same because I've always liked what I've put out because it's been authentically me. Um, but I've also had to realize that there will be things that I won't do on my channel because they're popular or because they get views. Um, there are There's just a lot of the YouTube game that I don't want to implement into my channel. And um, I hope you like it. I hope you like what you see moving forward. A lot of it will stay the same, but I feel like my focus has been narrowed. And my focus is how can I teach? How can I bring joy? How can I encourage? And what am I leaving for my children? And how can I do all of that with a limited amount of time? And so I think moving forward, there'll be more kind of just sit down videos that I can film and edit easily because time is precious to me. Um, so they need to be something that I can, I can do easily. I also want to um, capture our family. I want those memories for my own sake. I don't care if anybody else watches them. That's that's not even the point. And to be honest, I may even just turn off comments on family vlogs. I think I have to anyways, or they will anyways if my kids are in them. Um, but I just want those memories for the sake of my family. And I want to be able to have things on my channel that my kids or the people in my world can look back on and uh, be encouraged to be equipped and um, to find hope and joy. Like, I, I just, just want that. So you're not going to see things like... Halls, clean with me's, controversial stuff. Um, and I don't, you'll never see my kids in a bad light. You'll only see the best of them because that's, because I don't want 
if I'm putting them out there, if they're being shown, I only want the good things to be shown, just the way it is. Um, I have always thought about filming every single day. I have thought, what would I film? How would I do this? This is what I want to show every day, every single day. And um, I want to thank you for those of you who have stuck through all of this with me, who have followed my channel for years because I've been around for years. The tagline of Sweetly Home has always been and has been for years where heart and home come together. I came up with that years ago. I know exactly where I was years ago. And I've seen people take that line and twist it. Um, I've heard my intro where I say, hey, welcome to my channel, my name is Mandy. At my channel, we like to talk about all things heart and home. And today we're gonna talk about a little more home related or we're gonna talk a little bit about more heart related. I've heard that on other channels and I realize, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Home has always been a big deal for me. Home has always been my jam. Before YouTube ever became a thing in my world, way back before blogging was even really a big thing, I had a blog and I named it Finding Home. And in fact, actually yesterday on Facebook, I had one of those like memories come up and it was something that I posted on my blog and I had a graphic and it had my name Finding Home on it. And because I was just like a small little blogger, uh, someone else came up with that name and used it and marketed it and probably trademarked it, I'm guessing. They made a whole business around finding home. And so once that happened, I sort of lost my mojo for blogging because I just felt crushed because this was my sort of thing that I built for a couple years. And now someone else had that name and they were way bigger than I was. Um, and so when I came to YouTube and I thought, what's my name going to be? And just sweetly home was just something that like resonated with me. And, um, it just was what it was. And my bent has always been towards home. I made a home management binder before Pinterest even existed. Um, I like was reading books on homemaking before this was ever a thing. <sighs> Home has always been so stinking important to me and it's been a big portion of my identity and moving forward with my channel I want home to be front and center <sighs> I had to wrap this up but I'm gonna tell you a couple things the first is I have hours and hours and hours of footage of things from even years ago that I've never edited and put online. And I don't want to just sit on all of that because there's some good stuff, recipes and family memories and just thoughts and things that I want out into the world, out onto my space here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label those in a way that you know this is from before. Something in the title, maybe like, lost vlogs or something weird like that but you'll know this isn't actually from today I'm gonna look probably different because my hair changes all the time um my kids will look younger I think this will be different um but I'm gonna um label that in such a way that you know boom I still haven't even done like all of our Disney vlogs and that was a year ago um but I want those things living on my channel so my family can look back on them and I may, just for the sake of life, just turn the comments off on some of those things. Um, things that, you know, family memories, I think I have to anyways, I think I've said that. But I need you to know that a lot of content will come and it may not be present day. I've even filmed some stuff at the beginning of like coronavirus, like before Easter, that I want to put on my channel so that I have to look back on. Like this is what life looked like, even though things have kind of changed since then. 
I also want you to know that uh, if you really want to connect with me, find me on Instagram. That is really where you're going to like get that one-on-one -on -one connection with me. I'm not great about checking my DMs because my time is limited and I just don't have the time to always respond as quickly as I would like. I always respond, but it may not be super quick. I don't turn notifications on on my phone. I have to actively open up the app and go into my messages and read things that way. Um, your time is really important and my time is really important and we have such a limited amount of it and i think if there's one thing that like coronavirus has taught us is that life is so precious so precious and it can be gone in an instant and i want what i do to have a lasting impact on those in my circle and that's what I'm doing here on my channel. So thank you for sticking with me and thank you for being here. And if what I've said doesn't resonate with you, feel free to hit that unfollow button. I've never been about numbers. If I was, y'all, like I've been on here for years, six years or so, maybe seven. Um, and it's never been about creating content that would draw in the masses. It's always been in creating a relationship with you, teaching you something, encouraging you, equipping you, and giving you a bit of joy for your life. That's what it's about here. We're about all things heart and home. And that is what you're going to find on Sweetly Home. Moving forward, always. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Um, I can't wait to connect with you. <laughs> Life is so good right now. Even in the really, really, really hard moments, the really ugly hard, especially that as we're walking through in our world, there's so much goodness and so much hope and so much joy. I love you guys. I am praying for you. Let me know that i am praying for you you are part of my crew i appreciate you and thank you so much for spending this time with me i will see you in my next video bye